I'm going to teach you a little bit more about gaps, but for now, here is the AM session ICT silver bullet trading up into that gap high. Swing low is right there. So it hit our higher time frame weekly objective. That's a key level. It hits it, breaks lower, shift in market structure that's bearish. Small little imbalance here. This right here, that move right there, that is the 2022 ICT mentorship model. So buy side taken into a premium, shift in market structure, fair value gap, trades up into it, there's your shell, go short. What do you aim for? Relative equal lows and liquidity. And if you want to be overzealous, you can aim for the weekly gap low. I personally wouldn't have, but for the sake of argument, you could have. Now, if you're trading the ICT silver bullet, we have a shift in market structure and it's much more pronounced. So this swing low here is broken. We have a fair value gap between this candle's high and that candle's low. This is a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. Price returns back up, there's your short. You'd have to endure one more time in a small amount of drawdown in here. It spends a little bit of time and then finally gives up the ghost, breaks one more time below that low, digs into this sell side, but notice that that low is just barely below those. You know what it's reaching for, new week opening gap. They're like a magnet, okay? The market drops, comes back up, another fair value gap. So you could have taken this one if you didn't take that one, or you could have traded this one short, pyramided more in here. Drops down, look where that low is on that candle right there. That's the new week opening gap low. Bang, perfect, right to the tick. Runs right back up in, returning back to the old fair value gap, dropping aggressive, small gap in here around new week opening gap, trades up into it here, which is institutional order flow entry drill, which is a partial return into not a complete closure of that gap. That candle's high, that candle's low, just a little bit above the low, and then consolidates and tears off and goes lower. And I'm gonna tell you how that low would be significant. If you take the high here and add your fib to it here and draw it down to that low, one standard deviation, would be 4278.75. That's a pretty handsome objective. If we treat that high to that low, this low being a fulcrum point, that means if this move from high to that low was like a door, okay, and it swung, this was the hinge of the door, this high, if it was allowed to swing completely all the way around, and it would come right down right below that low here, it would come to that price point here. So all I'm saying is, is this range from that low to high subtracted from that low takes us right to this 4278.75. Now I'm going to teach you advanced gap theory. We're going to take a look at that same price swing. All of this is the, the initial run up. This is a Judas swing in the first 30 minutes of trading. So at 930 opening bell, we see the price run higher, stops dead in its tracks at the weekly gap high. The gap high that I told you about weeks ago. Having that level on your chart and then anticipating price reacting there. Swing low, it breaks lower. And that gives us this small little gap right there. This gap right there is simply a fair value gap. It's a common gap. They can be traded though with the context that I've already taught you. 2022 model, buy side, higher time frame level, takes buy side, does it go after the short-term low? Yes, it does. Did it leave a gap? Yes, it did. Go short, stop above this candle's high right there. If you're really scared and you don't want to take a larger risk, put your stop right above here and trade with left, less leverage. The market uh, breaks lower and we have this gap right here. This is a fair value gap in the form of a SIBI, just like this is, but this is a breakaway gap. What is it doing? It's breaking away from this important higher time frame high inside the model of the 2022 ICT mentorship model that I taught you. And it's moving aggressive. So we have one, two, two times there's a shift in market structure that's bearish. This is a breakaway gap. Breakaway gaps must, it must have some context as to why price should see, for instance, this is a bearish breakaway gap. It's breaking away from a level that we would already anticipate being some measure of a uh, short, okay? Some context around this level, we would expect to see some kind of respect of that level, okay? So it's a higher time for weekly gap high. We've already been there on Monday, repelled lower. We created a short-term high prior to it here and then ran up to it there. And then it took that low out there, left the gap. That in itself is the 2022 model. Then it breaks again, returns back into it here. What did it leave relative equal lows? So there's your fulcrum point from low to high. You may have missed the 2022 model entry here. No problem. Return back into this gap here. Breakaway gaps tend to leave a portion of the gap unfilled. From this candle's low to this candle's high, it retraces all the way up into this level. So between these highs of these candles and that candle's low, there's a small portion that's left open. We would expect to see that. If this is going to be a gap, say you went short into it here and you're seeing it and watch it in here. Your stop, if you were shorting in here, would be above this candle's high. Not 
not fearing any return back into this because we have had two shifts in market structure. This return in here, you're anticipating while entering the trade. You're expecting this portion to stay open. If it does, you want to see that happen anyway for your trade. But if it doesn't and it completely fills it in, that's not a breakaway gap. Then it may need to come back up and tap this one more time. So if you were to get stopped out, you have to wait for it to hit this fair value gap and then break one more time, create another imbalance or fair value gap and then use that to go short. So what I've just taught you is how you navigate. If you're wrong and it doesn't become a breakaway gap, you wait for it to trade to the higher time frame fair value gap and then break lower again, create another fair value gap and then treat that as a potential later breakaway gap. But the context is it's running up here to get traders thinking it's going higher. Bullish, okay? From this low up to this high. And here, this looks like a bull flag. I guarantee it to most retail traders. And when it went above that high here, that validated everyone thinking that it's a bull flag. Then it broke lower. Now, if you didn't have that weekly gap high, you would never understand what I'm showing you here. But you've known that level for weeks. It broke down. And then here is a breakaway gap. It's qualified as a breakaway gap because it leaves and goes lower to another lo new low and leaves that portion open. At that time, we get real confident that it never will come back up to this level here. So we can drop our stop rate to that level there and let it roll. Then we have these two candles here. These are one minute candles. So this is essentially two minutes of a fair value gap. So this is a standard typical ICT fair value gap in the form of a SIBI. And you can see them come back and trade back to them. They're like, a, again, a common gap. Common gaps can be retraded to multiple times and they reclaim them sometimes as support or resistance. And then we have this large gap here, these two down closed candles. That's one big fair value gap in the form of a SIBI. If we were looking at a two minute chart right now, it's one minute. If you do this on your own charts, look at this area here on a two minute chart. That's one candle down. So it's only trading back up into consequent encroachment of the two minute range of these two specific one minute candles. So in easy language and layman's terms, from this candle's low and this candle's high, on a two minute chart, this is one down close candle. Midpoint of that is where it's trading here. That's consequent encroachment. This is a fair value gap in the form of a SIBI, sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency, and it's a measuring gap. What's that mean? We can take this range and use it for projection. The market breaks lower, and then we have another fair value gap in the form of a SIBI. You can look at this on a two minute chart. This will be one down closed candle. And again, essentially working into consequent encroachment, taking buy side here, and then breaking lower to a lower low below that weekly gap low. Standard fair value gaps, which are common gaps, they can be reclaimed or traded back to as resistance or support. The market trades back up to here. Look at the bodies of the candles here. That's telling you what the narrative if you're reading my gap theory in price, if you see these signatures like this, see, I'm going to tell you all the time, the bodies tell you the story. The wicks do the damage. The wicks is what everybody else gets messed up with. Reading price action naked with time and looking for these types of signatures here, the open and close of these two candles here are supporting the idea that this low of that inefficiency is being respected. And then price does what? It trades lower. Where does it trade to? Below the sell side here, but not some random level. If we take the high of that price swing and draw that Fibonacci all the way down to that candle's high right there. From high to low of the gap. Why this gap? Because this is the measuring gap. It's approximately half of a implied dealing range. Implied meaning we're looking for it to go lower, but we haven't seen price go there yet. We're not reacting, remember? We're predicting price. So the high here, draw that down to that candle's high right there. What that does is gives you a projection to a standard deviation of negative one. The negative one standard deviation comes in at 4269.25. The low comes in exactly at 4269.25. Folks, that is the daily low to the tick right there. And it never went lower today. Even after our session, didn't go lower. So this is my ICT swing projection theory. When I break the market down, see gaps are just like a PDRA matrix. They have an hierarchy. You have a breakaway gap. You have common gaps. Common gaps can be reclaimed. That means treated multiple times. Measuring gaps tend to leave a portion open, just like a breakaway gap. So if we're expecting it to go lower, it stands to reason that we expect it not to trade all the way up here. And if we're expecting it to be a measuring gap, guess what? We want to see it not go up there. And that confirms and qualifies it as a measuring gap. Then we can take the high, project it down to the low of the gap if we're bearish, and then get our standard deviations. But that standard deviation neg negative one has to be in agreement with moving below an old area of liquidity. So that's between these two things makes us have the precision, okay? It's not simply you take a fib, put it over two different price swings, and then you're going to get the same math that I have. But understanding that gaps have an hierarchy, okay? And this is how I qualify my gaps. Every time you watch me do a recorded trading 
episode where I'm going in and I'm trading live data and I'm pyramiding and adding and pyramiding and adding and I'm taking partials off and I'm looking for a specific level. And I'm using this logic here when I'm drawing out, when I say I want to leave this, see this portion of the gaps they open. I want to see this portion of the gaps they open. Ideal if it leaves this portion open unfilled. It's this theory I'm teaching you right here. 